It goes the forest down. Totally. And it'll work for probably like 10% of the yeah. people. And then most people, what they're going to do is they're going to run. And my key is making mm -hmm. sure I temper myself, have patience with my tendency, which is to be like, ah, 100%. I want to help, 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 help. You know, let me do this. So what can I do? do, do, do. I feel like, like that people show it differently as well. Like they might be tuned in, but you don't know. Totally. And uh, that's one of those things that I think if you're giving them the space to come to the conclusions on their own, as rather than me trying to jab the conclusions down, A, I'm going to learn more about myself in that process too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Because that's the thing is that I often try to just make sure I'm taking ownership of my piece of it. Do you know what I mean? That, yeah. Hey, I recognize I'm a problem solver. Right now, I'm trying to solve problems. Sometimes people don't want problems to be solved. They just want to sort of feel it in the moment. And that's okay. As long as you don't stay in that feeling. But sometimes people just want to say, you know what? This sucks. And it's, yeah, this sucks. Instead of me saying, my tendency is, oh, well, what if we did this? And we could do this. And we could do this. And we could do this. Instead, sometimes just be present with the person in the emotion. And then once that emotion starts to ebb, then you can work on on moving. How did you come to the to the realization of that wisdom. Ah, failure. <laughs> lots and lots of failure of conversations, of relationships, of the sense of when I would do that, then having the repercussion. And sometimes repercussions I wouldn't know because you know, people you know people wouldn't want to make me upset or they wouldn't want to tell me or and then another person would tell me, be like, oh my God, I, in my mind, I, that was a great conversation. And in reality, that person took it in this way that I had no intention or meaning. Wow. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it's because of the fact that it was so aggressive and so, you know, it's not, it wasn't was aggressive in like, oh, like a negative way. No. It's aggressive in like, let me help, let me do this, let me solve this problem. It's like a fire, it can light a flame or burn the forest. You got it. So, so, ha so after enough of that occurred, what was the process of you overcoming that and kind of pivoting? To daily battle? Okay. To battle yourself. Do you know what I mean? Because your t my tendency is that that problem solver tendency, and I was a middle child, so I don't like conflict. Oh, you know? Okay, all right. So I, I really uh, I know my tendency is to avoid conflict, which is yeah. not a healthy thing. Sometimes you know, conflict is part of life. Uh, so you, you constantly need to be able to check yourself and ask yourself that question, like, all right, am I am I approaching this in the right way? And the other thing you have to do is you got to disengage from the situation sometimes. Mm -hmm. And almost imagine, you know, I just mentioned Jocko Willen and yeah. Seal. Um, imagine if the general was at the front lines in the midst of the battle, he can't see the big picture. Yeah. And sometimes you need to be able to disengage. He talks about that yeah, big time. And it's a, it's one of his lessons of combat that relates to, to business. Mm. Uh, you have to be disengaged sometimes, not because you're not interested, but because yeah. you have to be able to see everything mm -hmm. before you make a decision, before you approach something. And it's almost like a dance of uh, being in the front and being in the distance. You got it. Yeah. Like one of the common denominators of studying Napoleon and Alexander the Great, they were in front and they were in back. Correct. Yeah. So. And their battle scars prove that.